Hi there, I'm Karen Roby uh, with Ed Bott of ZDNet in Tech Republic today, and we're talking about Google Drive for Business and Microsoft OneDrive uh, for Business, and probably Ed. A good thing to do here right off the top is for you just to explain uh, the names, what it means, what these products are about. Sure. Uh, these are cloud collaboration platforms. Basically, what they allow you to do, uh, especially for businesses, if you're an organization, you have a, a subscription to one of these services, and then you assign licenses to your users, and each one of your users gets their own private space in the cloud where they can store documents, they can share documents, they can uh, make them available for other people, they can uh, edit documents at the same time. So you could be working on an Excel spreadsheet or a, uh, a presentation that you're making in Google Slides and uh, different members of your team can work on them at the same time. It has a, uh, the, the whole concept has a, a fair number of advantages, starting with the, the, the fact that your files are always backed up. You don't have to worry about uh, sending attachments out to people. They, uh, they can just go, you, you send someone a link and they can open that file immediately. And if something happens to your computer, you don't have to worry because you can go to another device and you have instant access to, your, uh, to, to all of your saved files. Now, these I'm talking about these as if they were standalone products and indeed, they can be if you want them to be, but in general, most people are going to get either Google Drive or OneDrive for Business as part of a larger subscription. In the case of Google, that's going to be uh, the G Suite package, which includes uh, G Gmail for Business with your own custom domain name, uh, the calendaring program, and the apps, the Google apps that go with it. So you know, docs and sheets and slides. For Microsoft OneDrive for Business, uh, that's a product that comes along with Office 365 Business and Enterprise subscriptions. So basically you pay for one of those big subscriptions and the, the cloud storage and the cloud collaboration features come along with it. Okay, and, and you know, Ed, some people might be scratching their head a little bit. I know I am uh, on this because uh, if they're both available in, in free versions, why pay, uh, you know, for business versions? Right. That's a, uh, that's a really great question because uh, many, many people are going to be accustomed to using either Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive without the for business attached to the end of it uh, as free products. It, all you have to do is sign up for a Microsoft account and you get five gigabytes of free storage. If you sign up for a, a, a Google account, a Gmail account, you also get a total of, I think it's 15 gigabytes of storage, which gets, which gets shared for your Gmail and your photos and your shared files. Now, those packages are free uh, and there's, there's two things they don't have that are kind of crucial for businesses. One is a management layer. Uh, and when you have a business subscription to those, uh, you as the owner of the business or the administrator of the business network, you have control over what happens to those files. You, uh, you get to assign the licenses to people and you also get to set the rules over how they can share uh, the, the stuff that's, that they're creating for your company. And that's really important because if I'm working on like a, a, a confidential proposal for a merger that's coming up, uh, I, you know, if, if I'm doing that in my free OneDrive or Google Drive account, I can share that and send that to anyone. Uh, but if I'm doing it in my business account, my administrator can lock it down so that I can only share it with people who are part of my same network, part of my same organization. They can also restrict the right to print it. They can even, you know, they can restrict the right to, uh, to share it in a bunch of different ways. So management is a big reason to use the, the paid services. In the case of Microsoft uh, OneDrive for Business versus the free Microsoft OneDrive, there's also the, uh, the issue of licensing because the free OneDrive uh, service technically doesn't allow you to use it for commercial purposes. So you really, in that case, you need to pay for the uh, business subscription. Yeah, definitely some things to, to consider there, Ed. Uh, I know in your article, you wrote a couple uh, pros and cons for each. Expand on those, if you will. 
Okay, sure. Uh, so I think in, in the broadest outlines, uh, both of the products are, are very, very similar. You essentially get uh, a hard drive in the cloud. Uh, it's, it's no different than the hard drive that's in your laptop or your desktop PC. And then you get a synchronization client that, you, that gets installed onto your PC. It's included directly with Windows 10 for, uh, for Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, and with Google Drive, you just in install a very small client. And what that does is it keeps your, your cloud files and your local files in sync. So if you get onto an airplane or something, uh, you have access to your files because they've been synced down to your local device. You don't have to be online. Uh, and that's also the thing that makes the benefit of, of being uh, of a, a backup possible. Uh, and then you get on top of that, uh, you have links in uh, the web client in the case of Google and in the office programs in the case of Microsoft where you can uh, just click on a file to share it immediately with somebody else and even, even work on them collabor uh, collaboratively so that you type and they see what you're typing, they type and you see what they're typing and you're basically, you're, you're watching each other uh, create the same document at the same time. Uh, the amount of storage that you get with a Microsoft OneDrive for Business account is one terabyte per user, which is a tremendous amount of storage. Uh, if you have uh, more than five users in your subscription, then you actually get unlimited storage. Uh, and all, but you have to go through Microsoft support to get the uh, individual allotments for individual people bumped up. Uh, but you can have essentially unlimited uh, storage for people. With, uh, with G Suite, where you get the business version of Google Drive, the basic allotment for a G Suite basic uh, subscription is 15, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's 15 gigabytes or maybe 30 gigabytes. It's a relatively small amount, although it, it will support thousands of documents, but comparatively, it's a small amount. If you go up to the higher tier of G Suite subscriptions, if you pay $12 a month instead of $6 a month, then you get uh, unlimited storage. That, so that's the, the pros come basically are, are the same for both packages. It's backup and collaboration and a whole bunch of storage that you get in the cloud as part of your subscription. The cons for each service are a little bit different. For, uh, for the Google Drive product, the major con that I see is if you're in an organization that uses the Microsoft Office desktop apps on, uh, on Windows PCs and on Macs, you're going to discover that, that it's not a seamless process of working with them. Uh, and there are especially difficulties with the fidelity of the formats between the two. So if you, if you save an Office file up to your Google Drive and then you collaborate with it uh, uh, on it with someone else, you may discover that some of the changes that you're making, especially if you make them in Office, aren't saved because the feature sets aren't the same. So if you're uh, an organization that's committed to the Microsoft Office desktop apps, you, you're going to probably discover that that uh, that Microsoft OneDrive for Business and Microsoft Office 365 are a better fit for you. Converse is true with uh, with Microsoft OneDrive for Business. Probably the biggest con that you've got is that there's a there's a storage limit per file. There isn't, a, there isn't a limit on the total amount of storage that you have, but the limit per file is 15 gigabytes. Now that might sound pretty big, but if you are working on say video files or very large CAD drawings or something, you can easily go over that 15 gigabyte limit and then you'll discover that you can't sync those up to your OneDrive and you have to figure out another way of working on them together. Uh, the other issue that I think a lot of people are going to have with OneDrive for Business is that it's a fairly complex product from an administrative point of view. It's really designed for use in larger organizations with uh, 100, 250, even tens of thousands of users worldwide. And so the, uh, the administrative burden can be a little challenging for people, especially if they're in small businesses with only 
you know, one, two, three, five people. Okay. And you know, Ed, although it may not seem like it, there is more to life, right, than Microsoft and Google. Uh, so if, uh, you know, somebody's watching this and, the, and they're contemplating this for their business, are there any other options in this round to consider? Sure. There are, uh, uh, there's a tremendous number of business focused cloud services out there. There's also a lot of, 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 um, personal cloud services that you can use. So if you have a Mac, uh, if you're primarily a Mac person, you could use Apple's iCloud, for example, and that works pretty well uh, for individuals who are in the Apple ecosystem. Uh, Amazon has an Amazon Drive product, uh, but both of those are kind of aimed at people who are sort of uh, amateur photographers and just want a place to gather their photos more than anything else. I, iCloud a little better than that, but, uh, but they're not really business-focused products. Uh, probably the, the most important alternative for people in business are uh, the Adobe products, uh, Document Cloud and Creative Cloud, which are tied to Photoshop and Acrobat. And so if you subscribe to one of those services, then you can get uh, from 20 gigabytes to one terabyte of cloud storage space available. And it's kind of optimized for use with those Adobe products. Um, you can, there's a, a, an independent company called Intermedia that offers hosted uh, Microsoft Office 365, but they have their own cloud service called SecuraSync. And uh, it's very good. I've used it for years and I would recommend it to people who like the idea of the Microsoft Office products, but for whatever reason, don't want to buy it directly from Microsoft. Uh, that's a very good alternative. Um, and uh, of course, there are Dropbox and Box, two uh, long-standing services that have been around, have basically defined the category for well over a decade. And uh, those are available in free tiers, but they're also available in business versions that have pretty good hookups into Microsoft Office apps. And then there are specialized uh, services. Uh, one that I'll call out here is called Ignite, which allows you to uh, bundle cloud storage from uh, your own local servers, as well as from a multitude of, of cloud providers, including Microsoft and Google, as well as Ignite's own. So, uh, you know, that's kind of a, if, if you're looking for choices, uh, there's lots and lots of them. And I can also pretty much guarantee that I'm going to get calls from a bunch of services that I didn't name in that segment uh, after they finish this video. Uh, yeah, you know you will, Ed. You can just go ahead and count on that. Uh, well, you know, with so many options, that's it's a good thing for people to have them, but sometimes too many options can seem overwhelming. So in closing here, what do you recommend to someone that is maybe looking for a, a new provider in this, in this arena? How do they go about starting their homework on this? Well, uh, there's an article uh, at ZDNet that I just finished that compares these two products uh, in detail, uh, even more detail than we went into here today. That's probably the best place to start. Um, and that has some links to some of the places where you can find uh, a detailed inventory of the features that are in uh, each suite. But uh, the, probably an even easier way to do it is to go sign up for a trial subscription with one or both of them and, uh, and kick the tires yourself. Uh, both, uh, uh, both Google and Microsoft offer free trials so you can take uh, a couple weeks or up to a month and see if it works for you. All right, some great advice there, Ed. Thank you so much for that. Make sure you check out that full article that he was talking about there on ZDNet.